Greetings and welcome to Ghosts Are Near, where we explore and discuss paranormal phenomena. I am your host, Keith Johnson, the co-founder of New England Anomalies Research. Please join us here at the old Slater Mill building in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, for an evening with my good friends, Tom D'Agostino and Arlene Nicholson. Um, this particular field, Keith has written several books. Carl does um, the majority of our paranormal investigations. They're done with a great amount of respect. Um, they're not over the top. People really enjoy spending time with him and Keith. They're both great gentlemen, and I just want to let everyone know and let you know how appreciated that is, and that um, this is history that we're teaching. We teach traditional public history here seven days a week, practically all year. And this is just another way to look at the history, and it's really the two of you who are responsible for all of the great things that have happened here this month and for many years. So how about a round of applause for <laughs> so, um, the three of us are very excited to have um, their friend and somebody that I have, uh, my husband Marty and I have followed for some time, Tom D'Agostino and his beautiful wife, Arlene Nicholson, who, uh, Tom, at least I know, has written many books on the paranormal, particularly related to Rhode Island. Um, there are a number of television programs on PBS that run at certain times under the Haunted Rhode Island and other brands in which you can see Tom. And um, whether you're a person who's a believer or a non-believer, there's something to be said and to respect about the amount of research that has gone into their knowledge of um, the historic and cultural landscape. So we really appreciate that work and we're very excited to have Tom here tonight. Um, just a quick housekeeping, when we leave this room, we're going down the bell tower right into the factory. So if you need a visit to the bathroom before that, in the kitchen on this floor there is a bathroom. Just follow the lights around to the left and um, you can make a pit stop in there before we go downstairs because we won't be going back through that gift shop until the end. I thought we weren't going to do that. Well, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Is that a special day for October 29th? No bad. That's his humor. I won't do that. He's so <laughs> Hey, George <laughs> Burns, come on. He looks around for the whole tour. So Tom is aware of that. So at the end of the night, we can go into the gift shop and he can sign your book and you can purchase that. So thank you all so much for being here. Thank you again, Carl and Keith. Thank you, Tom, Charles. And Arlene, who are here tonight, it's going to be a fun night. And uh, welcome. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, Tom. And welcome, Tom. Did I introduce Tom? <laughs> <laughs> said, he said some nice things about him, but I'm I don't the really know where he is. Tom, Tom D'Agostino. <laughs> Once you stand up there, you can't see too much. Anymore. No, I don't want to. I'm going to stand here. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you everyone for coming. I'm glad you came. And, uh, tonight we're going to do, not only are we going to do a real, I mean a real, this is October 29th. It's a very cool song. This is a real, real, real investigation up here. Uh, we have video cameras going. We have recorders. I know a lot of you brought your own recorders and stuff. We're going to try and capture the EVPs, believe it or not. I already have captured two of them just taking a walk through here last weekend. Um, and that wasn't even unintentional, so it's not like, wow, you know. Um, we were, there was three of us who took a walk through here, and two of us came out. <laughs> we're going to be visiting all three buildings and we're going to be actually looking for, you know, whatever paranormal activity. Hopefully it'll find us and communicate with us and uh, it usually does. Somebody is always a catalyst. Don't forget, everybody is different. We all have different auras and different energies, so therefore you might be the one that they want to cling to. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> this is our investigation tonight. Ooh. Ooh. We're going to investigate that pole right there. <laughs> I think Last that's a suspicious place. pole. <laughs> These are the three buildings, obviously, we'll be investigating. Um, this one, which we're in right now, that one there, and that building. 
Um, so they're all old. Cool. What? They're all old. old they're buildings. all old. Yep, they're all old buildings. Um, almost as old as me. And the wheel pit is one of them in the Wilkinson mill. Now don't forget, David Wilkinson built the equipment for this, who owned the Rantail Factory. And he ended up, he actually ended up owning um, Pear Lake Walker's mill in Barville too. In a kind of a very strange incident. Are you ready for this? He was the executor of Pear Lake Walker's will at the end of his estate. He was in charge of selling everything. So he couldn't, uh, naturally, he couldn't buy it, right? When you're trying to sell it, you can't say, well, I'll take that myself. You have to auction it off. So this guy, Charles Tibbetts, buys the mill in Barville, the house and everything, for $900. Goes on to deed. Charles Tibbetts. One hour later, David Wilkinson buys from Charles Tibbetts <laughs> the mill, the everything, $900. The He's deeds are right man. next to each other in the deed book, signed by the same person, everything. It's almost like he planned it. Somehow. He did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a wild coincidence. Charles Tibbetts was probably thinking, oh my God, I did him. I made a mistake. I didn't want to buy this. Can, who wants it? And Maybe says, he's the man that's wanting that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, David, David feeling, feeling bad really bad him. probably said, I'll take it from you. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's so anyway. <laughs> David Wilkinson owns all that. He got this. This is the mill. This is a, the, the wheel pit that was one of the places we'll be investigating. There's a camera going on there right now, unless um, something unseen entity swatted it. Here is the factory. Now, this is cool. We're going to be going down these stairs. You've seen ghosts on the stairs, right? Some people have seen apparitions on these yes, stairs. Yes, right on the stairwells, around. we'll be descending, as a matter of fact, uh, yeah. three times in the last year and a half. Wow. Do you see shadow figures here? Yep, and this is the mill too. This is in the daylight. We were here. We were just taking a turn in the daylight, and this is kind of uh, Carl. You haven't heard this yet. I need you to hear this. This is incredible. Yes. Okay, you were telling us about that machine, the uh, the speeder, the mule. Yes, yeah, the mule spinner that, that can spin. One the kids used to, used to have to jump underneath. Oh yeah, they used to hit the deck, uh, yeah. get underneath, crawl. Pauline doesn't carriage. interrupt anyone, so she's not interrupting you at this time. But then someone else is. And it's not my voice, and it's not your voice. So you were saying that I was actually with the child over the room? Yeah, I did. And I had to go out and see the girl. They were all together. Six-year-old kids. And it grabs two strands of rope and combines them in the nuts. Somebody had to get back there behind the carriage. Now you hear something say, that's so not you know, all. So you were saying, I was actually at the child. That's not your voice. It's like, listen. I was going to go around to see the girl. They were all together. Six-year-old kids. And it grabs two strands of rope and combines them in the... Yeah. It's yeah, well, I heard that. I hear it. Yeah. 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 Uh, two weeks ago today, I think it was, uh, we were showing them around. I uh, gave Arlene and Tom a tour. Do you hear two women talking? You hear Arlene saying something and another one talking, too. Yeah. So these voices are coming out there. Yeah. There's only three of us in the whole place. There's five people talking. It's five people talking, five <laughs> different voices. Well, 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 they're all around us. I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> not yet. But... I said, hey, get out of here. <laughs> and you know what? You have such a nice complexion for never having inhaled air. <laughs> hey, Tom, what does it mean? How come some EVPs are clear like the one before and some are whisper like? I have no clue. It could be it's just the intensity, the energy. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, most of them are like that, though, as you know. Yeah. But it was pretty interesting, though, because I, 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 we, I heard this Aline horn to my headphones. You know, so that was just. 
That was just uh, doing a tour, walking around too, just like explaining all the things, how that bench gets kicked, got kicked out a foot and a half, um, and all that kind of stuff like that. Well, what other things have happened anyway? I have a question. Uh huh. When you heard the ghost say something about a prayer, mm -hmm. what were you all talking about at the time? He was showing us how it went to the card machine. They couldn't stop the card machine. That the ki the kids had to get under it. Oh, okay. They'd have to tie the rope, like he said. They tied the cord, and then they'd hit the deck, and the thing would go whoop, and then they'd jump up and around it. Okay. They'll, they'll be in there tonight. You'll see it. And um, and Arlene says something, but there's another girl agreeing with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, because yeah, they are old machines. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, what looks old is slender mill. You went back there and you stopped yeah. for a second as if you were recording, and then you continued yeah. talking. And this thing started talking before you stopped and continued to when you started again, telling us how mm, wow. they would fix the machine. So if you see an old machine or an artifact, generally what looks old is slender mill really is old, except for the tour guides, of course. <laughs> Speak for yourself, young boy. Why you? <laughs> So all that, is that, is that the was only free. photograph? <laughs> <laughs> is that the only photograph of, the, of that, that mill with the three women there? Is that the only known? Yeah, that's the only known yeah, photograph. The There's no etchings, drawings of anything of that mill. We've looked everywhere. I'd love to find something. Yeah. We recently went did some um, we went in there and did some uh, metal detecting, and we found some some pieces of the mill. I found hand forged nails, which meant that they were blacksmith forged. And we found a weight that went to the brake of the quantum speeder to adjust the brake of it. The same ones that you guys have down here on a couple of the machines. Who are those three girls in the picture? Uh, one of them is Donna Mooney's um, great 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 aunt, and they don't know who the other two are, or three. They're not sure. They're probably all related because everyone in Foster's related. Maybe we can get Jay in on this. He can demonstrate the sitting <laughs> 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 The chairs? Uh, not yet, no. I think we'll just, uh, we can carefully, anybody who needs to use the bathroom, Last we have a restroom upstairs. The bathroom, yep. Last minute call. Bill Gober, um, you've been yes, here at Slater Mill investigating before. Yes. What do you anticipate for tonight, or what do you hope to anticipate? You know something, I'll be happy experiencing any kind of activity, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, like uh, an audible sound or hopefully even an apparition, which is something i got to be honest say I've never really seen uh, so far in my years of, uh, you know, investigating places here and there, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much about it, you know. Be, uh, I'd like to feel that thrill, I guess, you know, it's going to be a big ad adrenaline rush, I would think, when you do experience something like that, so I can only hope. And if not, it's just great to be here anyway. What do you anticipate for tonight? Well, I think having Tom and Arlene here um, is just, you know, kind of bringing a different energy, different perspective on uh, the history here, different approach to checking out our space. So I'm excited about that and the EVP investigation and Arlene um, reading the cards. I think that's, I don't know if we've done that here before, so it should be interesting. And I'm happy that. Um, Tom has cameras set up, so we're we're already recording and capturing things. So it'll be interesting to see um, what happens at the end of the night. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the rest of you guys can go with Carl. Keith, you're gonna come hang with. That's referred to as a cell phone for the dead. Yes. Thomas Edison invented it. We perfected it 10 years ago. 
well, not we, but a, a prank assumption. Yeah, if you want to try turning the machine on, see what happens. Could somebody help us here? The machine just went off. Is there something? It just went up with? to 80. Mm -hmm. You can watch the TV for a second. If I you hit a person, it goes to 80. Could you show yourself, please? We don't, it's dark, we can't see you. Could you move something so we can see where you are? Show us, please. Is somebody walking on over there? Well, they shouldn't be. Are any children walking? Is anyone here? Yeah, um, it's a feeling like uh, it, it happens every time there's some energy or something's about to happen. When I, when it feels like you get to the top of a roller coaster, that feeling you get just before mm -hmm. you start to go down. Mm -hmm. And from 34 years of doing this and over 1,200 investigations, I've learned that when that happens, something is going to happen oh. or is happening. Excuse me, sir. It seems to be coming from the radio. The radio that you have in your hands. That's my, my phone. Point. My phone, when I point it, it goes really, really high. Still in the Slater Mill complex, still in the mill itself, and I just saw something over here. Who is it that is, was just by the machine here? What is your name? We would like to recognize you as a worker of the week.
Hmm. Well, maybe we could go, you guys could try another room. See what happens in the next one. We'll grab someone else. What do you think, Keith? Sure. Yes. Voice Harry. We heard a woman's voice down there. Without any. Well, guess any what? Box yeah, you know, not even the ghost box. This was yeah. a woman's voice here. Guess just what? Just so that recorder down there has one of the <laughs> best. That video recorder has one of the best <laughs> audios. It's so maybe that television. voice will come out. Good. You heard. Good. And the K2 meter was uh, was answering questions. You know, so, okay. So it's, I don't know how it's going to be for the rest of the night, but it started off very active down there. Yeah, ours was getting a little nervous. Yeah, we've only been on here for about a minute and a half, so your time okay. is excellent. Okay, good. All right, well, I'm going to get all these guys. So you guys can go to the brown house. Okay, okay. you folks follow Tom. And as Keith and Tom can tell you, that's the only structure not originally here on our grounds. The house was moved here in 1962. Ready. They had a a staticky feeling to it. Mm -hmm. You know, the back of the hairs of mine went up. And this kept shutting off, full battery, full battery, full battery. So whatever was in here was uh, draining this stuff. You're right next to me, aren't you? I don't know how to get this over the night mode, though. I got this one, we'll work with this one. All right, we'll let this one recharge. Uh, it doesn't like me today. That recorder, believe it or not, I don't know what doesn't like that recorder because we were doing the ram tail documentary. All the equipment that they had um, for the PBS special, all the equipment they had just charged it. We looked at it, we checked it, we went in there, it drained like hell. That was the only thing that didn't drain. Well, it tra drained all those. Okay, everyone who's coming with us, follow us. <laughs> Would you please make that noise again? Was the exit sign was looking like the 12? X and two ones, and so when you just said that, that's what I saw at 12 when you asked the year, how long have you been here? It, it dropped seven degrees in, in under 15 minutes, actually. Marty, you heard a, you heard a whistle? High pitch whistle, yeah. Like oh, on a, a lighter note, I was just talking about how Jeremiah and I saw the shadow ghost here, he called right then. But then he wanted to get in a whole conversation. Did so you hear I had what we hang up on experienced? Him. Something of it. What did you hear? We heard a young child moaning. In the brown Mill house? No, in Slater. In Slaterville in the mill in the museum. Six minutes ago, or seven minutes ago. Yeah. Which would only put that about five of maybe three of ten when we heard ours at nine forty two. So it doesn't coincide, which means it couldn't have been the same, you know, influence. Hmm. The cold inside there is not the water because you'd be able to smell it. You can smell the water, right? My messages were 16 to 23. I kept going black and back and forth, you know, between the houses. And I thought, well, you know, the place is haunted, they say it's haunted, you know, everything. I just want to know the history. We're going to do this and be kind of fun. Maybe something will happen. I'd love something to happen. And when I got those two things that happened just out of nowhere, I was like, this place is unbelievable. Ooh. For it just to happen to Mags, I couldn't tell you how intensely wanting I wanted to be here tonight. And then when stuff started happening again, this place is unbelievable. It's like 
Nobody wants to leave. They live here. Do you ever, do you ever help them pass on? No. Does Arlene? No. We don't help them pass on because you know, the best you can do is bless, and maybe they'll do it on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, bless you know, and, and cleanse. Well, as far as pass on, you don't, I mean, you know, if you've got residual energy, you're not going to pass that on. If you've got um, uh, uh, an intelligent spirit who wants to hang on, you're not going to pass that on. And how do you know somebody wants to pass on unless right. they come to you and say, I mm -hmm. want to pass on? I mean, right? I mean, if, if you got chicken pox, you don't want to pass that on. <laughs> Took you a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> a little ghostly humor. <laughs> no, but seriously, it, it, I, we don't because many times you just is not. It's not the situation that's going. You can do with the energy that's involved. Another question. I was told we're not, and we're not an expertise in that field anyway. <laughs> right. But I was told if we had ghosts coming and going. Mm -hmm. that we could put mirrors in our windows facing out to stop them from coming in. Is that true? Do you know? Um, we have a cemetery across the street. Oh, okay. It's from the 1700s. Yeah. And we have all kinds of crazy things going on. I got a picture with about six orbs in it. Um, There's a, well, take this into consideration. I'm gonna, it, it, it has to do with, uh, eight, you know, New England was a vampire capital of the world from 1784 to 1892. And um, in 1807, a whole family was wiped out by consumption, which was the reason for ex exorcism for vampires. And what happened was this, um, in Plymouth, 13 out of 14 of the children had died. And the 13, after, when the 14th became ill, they took the 13th child, the 16-year-old daughter, and they dug her up. And they figured she was the one, you know, last one, so she's a vampire. Mm -hmm. And in order to keep her from killing the rest of the family, they turned her upside down, which meant that she, when she um, wanted to feed, instead of digging her way out of the grave, she'd dig herself deeper in the ground. Now, you're talking about an entity that defies all logic, physics, physical science, and all kinds of things that we cannot not only comprehend, but control. Right. This thing can take over you and a demon and everything, and it's going to get confused on which direction it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mirrors won't work. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs>